Hey friends, it is Lisa and Lane coming to you here today for Seed Talk. Hi, Lane. Hi, hello everybody. So friends, we are coming to you today with a special message. And before we jump in, if you're new here, we welcome you. And this podcast is brought to you by thegardenersworkshop.com. And we are so happy that you have decided to join us here. What's up today, Lane? All right. So today we are going to be having one of our Seed Talk Express episodes, one of our shorter episodes where we focus on just one topic. And today it is actually Thanksgiving Day in the United States. So happy Thanksgiving to everyone. We hope you're having a wonderful time celebrating with your family and friends. And in honor of Thanksgiving, we are going to be talking today about two flowers that Lisa and I are thankful for. So we're each going to pick one and we're going to talk about all the reasons that we love these flowers. So Lisa, would you like to get started? Oh, that sounds like so much fun. It is. (laughs) All right. (laughs) So if you are listening to us on your podcast app, you need to know that if you head on over to YouTube on our YouTube channel, there's actually a beautiful picture of one of my favorite flowers up right now. So you can hop over to YouTube to actually see um, a little bit more instead of just hearing us. Yep. All right. So the big reveal, Lisa, what is a flower that you are thankful for? Well, I don't think this is going to really be a big surprise to anybody, (laughs) but I am pretty dadgum grateful for sunflowers. Um, For so many different reasons, I underestimated their power in my business years ago. And since I was kind of reunited with them through another flower farmer, just kind of sharing with me how to have a constant supply of them because they're so in demand. I'm not the only person that loves sunflowers. Um, I've just fallen in love with them. And if you're seeing the image, you can see that there is so much diversity in color and you control the size, the way that we grow them. And I mean, what is not to love? And sunflowers in general last a long time. And I will tell you that they're just the sunniest flower. They make people smile on impact, you know? I mean, they just see them as, oh, I love sunflowers. It's the same, you know, for we hear from everybody. They do. And it was a really important crop for your farm as well when you were in high production, right? Yeah, it really, um, I often have been known to say that sunflowers and a couple other flowers literally floated our bouquet business for 10 years. I mean, we had a constant supply and we could puff up bouquets if we were short of other flowers. Um, Never has anybody said, no, don't put another sunflower in my bouquet. Um, Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, sunflowers bought and paid for my John Deere tractor and the implements that went with it in from one year's production. So pretty significant, I would say. Yeah. And they're a nice big seed. They're really fun to sow. What are some of your favorite varieties of sunflowers? I'm glad you mentioned that. And I do believe that sunflowers are universal for that reason that you just mentioned. They're super easy. If you plant them at the right time, they need a little bit of warmth to just sprout, Um, but they're easy to start from seed and people, and they grow kind of fast. Some of them do. So that's really a very fun and um, rewarding way to do that. And I'm sorry, what did you just ask me? What are some of your favorite varieties? Varieties. Well, First seat with me is always the series called Pro Cuts. Um, And in the Pro Cut series, there's about, I think there's 13 different colors now, which is what you're looking at pretty much here in this image that we have everything from the classic, the the standard um, sunflower that most people think of is the orange. They might think they're yellow, but they're actually orange with a brown disc. Um, and But there's such a vast variety of colors. There's white ones, there's chocolate ones, there's green centered ones. There's some that have double colors on their actual bloom. Um, so Pro Cut is my go-to, but we now have a new favorite for a bicolor, and that's the Sunflower Marley. Marley is a bicolor 
black colors typically are known to have like a little bit shorter vase life than some of the others, but that's not the case with Marley. He really lasts a long time um, in the vase and is just becoming a big part of our flower farm production. Yes. All right. So we know you love sunflowers. So let's move on to my pick. So mine also starts with an S and it also ends with flower. <laughs> you, you know what I'm talking about, Lisa? I think I'm kind of knowing what you're talking about. I thought so. <laughs> so I am very thankful for straw flowers. And there are a lot of different reasons that I love straw flowers. But my number one reason is we have really, really severe deer and rabbit pressure in our garden. And in all the years that I've planted straw flowers. I have never had deer or rabbits eat them. I am not saying that would be your experience, but if you do have deer or rabbit issues, I would highly recommend trying straw flowers. So many flowers that I plant, I have to protect them somehow, or I have to spray them. I have to cage them off or they will get eaten, but straw flowers are just carefree out there. I don't have to do anything and they are left alone. So that is my number one reason why I love straw flowers. But straw flowers are also cool flowers, but they can really take the heat. They handle the heat of summer extremely well. Even here in southeastern Virginia, where it's extremely hot, it's humid during the summer, they just perform all season long. I, in a garden setting, I don't give them any extra water. I don't know how much water you give yours, Lisa. Do you water them? No, we typically like you. I mean, they are pretty much carefree. The only... Um, I was just sitting here thinking, what problems do we have with straw flowers? Typically, the only issue that I have is that the um, leaf footed bug, which is in the stink bug family, is very attracted to them. Um, so I have to pick them off. I mean, that is one of the few bugs, along with Japanese beetles, that we actually hand pick and find that that really makes an impact. But no water, and they just yeah. keep on blooming and we pinch them and they really branch beautifully and they get tall and they're the colors are just so vibrant and then of course you know if you're seeing the um the video of this on youtube the wall behind me of my dried flowers um they hold the colors so this beautiful that silvery rose i believe in peach that you're showing right yes yes and it would, if they dried, they would look just like that. Um, so I just love straw flowers too, Lane. I think that's a, a really, really great one. Yeah. And the straw flowers are winter hardy to USDA zone eight. I happen to be in seven B. So another thing I'm thankful for is when I'm planting all my cool flowers in the fall, and there are a lot, I kind of like when I get to my straw flower packs and I get to say, oh, I get to wait on this, <laughs> this little section until... <laughs> until a very early spring, but they're just a really versatile flower. The head size is not too big. So they work really well in a variety of different arrangements. They have what actually looks like petals. Those are actually bracts and they're very I shiny. They're papery. They're extremely colorful. And that makes them a really long lasting cut if you want to use them for fresh use. And like Lisa was just mentioning, they dry really beautifully. Like even if yeah. you only want to use the heads because the stems can tend to get fragile once they're dried, but they really, really hold their color. And there are such a wide variety of colors available. So there are whites, there are pinks, there are yellows, there are oranges. Some of my personal favorites, like Lisa said on the screen on YouTube right now, we have silvery rose, which I just love. There's white, there's a true rose color, and there's a peach mix that is on the screen that has all these really soft apricot and peach tones that are just so pretty. And I like to use it in the landscape a lot. So mm -hmm. for me, I don't, we have a wooded lot. So things tend to get taller here than they might normally. How tall do your straw flower? I was going to say, and we get excellent stem length. I mean, they're like 36 yeah. to 48 inches, even in the middle yeah. of summer. They are super yeah. tall. Yeah, that's how ours are. They ours are at least four feet tall. Like I said, we have a wooded lot. So sometimes things stretch a little bit more because they don't have full, full sun. But yeah, I really like to use them in the back of the border because they're so tall. And then you just have these beautiful little flowers poking up above whatever you put in front of them. And also I tend to sometimes because they're in the landscape back of the border, sometimes I don't always use them for cutting. I'm just using them for the flowers. So the flowers might get a little more mature than what you would want 
if you were going to harvest right. them for a cut flower. But a feature that I really like is when they are kind of over mature like that, the blooms actually tend to close up at night or if it's overcast and then they'll reopen again when it's during the daytime. And it just, it kind of adds a little bit of magic to the garden when you walk out and they're closed and then you come back out later. Have you experienced that? Lisa? Yes. And we also find a lot of our native bees visit the straw flowers. Oh, I mean, yeah. Lots of sweet little bees with their little bee britches packed yeah. full of pollen, you know? Um, yes. Yeah. So totally about that. I love flowers that open and close with the sunset and sunrise. Um, and yes. yes, definitely. We have experienced that on our straw flowers too. Yes. Yes. And I, even towards the end of the season, I just tend to leave the flowers on the plants and just see how long I can enjoy them. And they, I still have flowers on plants right now that I planted out in very early spring. So they are just, they literally perform all season long. So I just, I really love straw flower and I know you like it too. And we actually succession plant them, even though they are a cool flower, yeah. which just really allows us to get them in the ground earlier. So we get the blooms earlier, but we tend to bloom to plant them about once every four to six weeks from that first very early spring planting up until midsummer, because we have never ever had enough straw flowers. I mean, Suzanne loves adding them to our bouquets. Our commercial customers always wanted them. Um, so they were in demand. Um, so we never ever had enough for sure. Yes. All right. Well, that was our episode for today. Remember to subscribe to this either on YouTube or in a podcast app. And we love if you would give us a rating, a review, a like, or a comment. And we just really hope that everyone, if you are celebrating Thanksgiving today, we hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving and enjoy all your family and friends. Yes. And we are so thankful for you guys. Um, so we just hope everybody has a safe and happily happy um, day, yes. regardless of where you are in the world. And until we yes. meet again, friends, ciao. Bye.